And what's happening is if you look at the lower left where Maya is, they're building a shelf. And so the shelf starts getting built and immediately you're seeing the shelf in Omniverse and frankly, also in Unreal Engine at the same time. Then somebody else comes along, somebody else in a different part of the world comes along in Adobe Substance and says, oh, I wanna change the texture of this material. And that immediately also shows up into the rest of your scene. And then the person up in Unreal Engine in the upper left is adding some cabinets and they're um, adding them to the scene directly. So this real-time collaboration is a critical part of this, this whole thing about how we're gonna be able to all work together to build out the uh, a really broad ver metaverse set of virtual worlds and so forth. Synthesia. One area of the metaverse and thinking way to think about the metaverse is about being this 3D evolution of the internet. It's this place where you have all these virtual worlds that people can do whatever their daily work would be. And it's going to span all sorts of industries. It'll span retail, uh, manufacturing, architecture, uh, telecom. Uh, it's really critical for the future of AI and for training. And so when we think about synthetic media generation, there's going to be a lot a lot of content creation necessary uh, to get this up and rolling. So let me show you a few different examples of what we're seeing already. And then we can come back to like, okay, how do we, how do we get in here and start building for this? This is the BMW factory. This is a rendering. Uh, it's real time ray traced. Those are the actual CAD models of the cars. Um, there's all sorts of different uh, apps involved there. This is a, a three different applications they're using to plan out how they're gonna build a car lift and how they're gonna move people around it. They used point clouds to go through and gather all the initial data to figure out how to render these factories. In this scene, you have a variety of tools involved like Ipilog for the carts, uh, PTC Creo for that robot. Um, and then for these cars, one of the scenarios that they're looking to do is human ergonomics. They're trying to figure out how do I pick a part off of a cart and stick it onto the car? And so they're using two different applications here. One is they're in Omniverse in this VR uh, experience. And another is they're using Ipilog and they're gonna pull this cart into the scene. And now I can say like, yeah, that feels good or no, make it a little taller. And they're iterating, they're collaborating together to get that, um, that design just right. So that's one flavor of a virtual world and, and how metaverse uh, future of internet might come together. Here's another one. Uh, this is Enterprise. No, this is not Enterprise. This is um, Ericsson. They're building, they're, they're planning to figure out where do I put my 5G towers? And so they would need a realistic scene that would uh, properly reflect the radio waves through the foliage and whatnot. There's the real one and the digital one. The only difference is you can see more information in the digital one. You can see the beam forming, you can see the signal strength and where the different vehicles will be calling into it. And they can use this for the basic scenario like this, driving the vehicle through the town, but they can also use this for synthetic media, synthetic data generation, where you are producing all sorts of different scenarios. Like what if there was a traffic jam on this road or what if there's construction, there's no traffic here. What if there's a parade and there's tons and tons of people in this space? What if it's raining? What if it's day, night, whatever it could be. And so you can, you can plan out if you're if your, if your visualization is physically realistic in the sense that it um, is sensorially accurate, right? It's accurate to all the different um, reflectivity of the radio waves, then you can plan thousands and thousands of different scenarios to make sure you've got everything right before you actually spend the money to go deploy it. Here's another example. This is a kiosk example. Um, and here we've got, you know, a couple of folks are walking up to a kiosk to order something. The kiosk recognizes that they're there. It reacts and uh, looks at them and, uh, you know, has an animated like welcome. They order some food and it can go, yeah, I've got some options for you. It can do the sort of multimodal um, um, delivery of like, here's what the items might be. It's got, as, you're, as, you're, as the voice is speaking, the lip syncing is correct to that um, as people, ask for different variations. Like they said, oh, I want something vegan. They'll say, yeah, I've got some vegan options here, some uh, black bean burgers. And it knew that it was about vegan. So context carry over and it can bring forward the options for you. And then it can say, I want that one or the latter one or whatnot. And it can help you go get what you're looking to get. Okay, so a lot of different situations in these virtual worlds where you're gonna have avatars acting as the bridge between 
the digital world and the real world. In fact, robots in general, if you, if you count an avatar as a robot, robots in general uh, are the bridge between the digital world and the physical world. You have a robot that's welding stuff or manufacturing parts or uh, carrying items down um, the aisleways in the, in the BMW factory. So there's, you've got the digital world, the, the, real, the real physical world and the robots that connect you to them and the people in them. Uh, let's get a little bit deeper. I'm gonna try my audio. We'll see if this works for this one. So this is about doing expressions on people using different emotions. So as amazement, anger, And so one of the things that was happening there is it's feeding in an audio file and the lip movement is, is based on that audio file. So instead of doing all of the keyframe management that you might want to do, you can, you can just run an audio file through it. So a couple different things to help you get these things laid out. Here's an example where we've got four different applications. So in the bottom corner here, in the lower left corner, we have Maya. In the middle, on the, on the left, we have Adobe Substance. And then in the upper left, we have Unreal Engine. And then over on the right, we have Omniverse Create. And what's happening is if you look at the lower left where Maya is, they're building a shelf. And so the shelf starts getting built and immediately you're seeing the shelf in Omniverse and frankly, also in Unreal Engine at the same time. Then somebody else comes along, somebody else in a different part of the world comes along in Adobe Substance and says, oh, I wanna change the texture of this material. And that immediately also shows up into the rest of your scene. And then the person up in Unreal Engine in the upper left is adding some cabinets and they're um, adding them to the scene directly. So this real-time collaboration is a critical part of this, this whole thing about how we're gonna be able to all work together to build out the uh, a really broad metaverse set of virtual worlds and so forth and twins. You need people who are experts in their different disciplines to be able to use the tools that are right for the job and that they're expert in. Uh, and they need to be able to collaborate remotely and in real time so they can get the cycle times uh, down. Because this is such a heart of it, there's a couple things that we're doing with Omniverse. One is we're really focused on this uh, universal scene description. It's called USD. Uh, it's a file format and an API. You can think of it kind of like HTML describes web pages, USD describes virtual worlds. And it was originally invented by Pixar to uh, help them with their movie production and making sure that all their artists could collaborate on the same film, even across films or the same characters across films and geographies. And so that's one piece of it. Another piece is we have this Nucleus server that's running, that's sending updates back and forth to all these different apps and firing off all the right events so that people can have this real-time collaboration. Then the next part is you've got to build an amazing tool chain in order to make this all sort of happen. So when you look at one of these sort of complex workflows, um, there's a design time, like you're designing the 3D scenes. You're, you're working in CAD or you're working in robotics. Um, you might be rendering or you might be adding AI services to do finite element analysis, um, maybe path tracing to figure out where things are going to go. And then through USD and all of those different apps and connectors to them, uh, you create these, these virtual worlds and then you can operate them. So now you have sensors running out in the real world and they're sending feedback into the, into the system. And you can do things like see what's happening right now on the job site and um, you can do things like rewind a couple of days ago and let's, let's rerun this thing. Or maybe I want to say, let's set up a, a different um, assembly line. And now I want to run through 20, 30, 40 different variations before I reconfigure my actual factory floor. Um, in this picture, uh, I hope you see a lot of opportunity for both creators and tool makers. So creators are going to have um, more ability to connect with a wider range of other creators than ever before once you start to lay this all out. And then tool makers are going to have all sorts of opportunities to help creators be more effective and, and getting through things. So really, when we think about the Omniverse, there's two kinds of 
customers that we're looking for. One is the publishers, the people who are going to make really cool tools and they're going to share them in our exchange and, and uh, enable the world to build like more amazing scenes than I can probably imagine. Everything from movies, factories to um, um, science, like a lot of things going on in healthcare with new kinds of um, optical equipment or like zooming in or zooming way out. Uh, and then there's also people who are using this so they can use Omniverse directly as a part of their workflow along with the other apps that they love to get the, uh, the experiences they want done. Synthedia. Synthedia.substack.com. Synthetic media, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, AI image and text generation news and more.